Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Today, we're going to listen to the testimony from Chris Johnson, who is with the Wisconsin Crime Scene Lab Forensics. I think he's the chief of forensics. Anyway, it'll we'll tell you here in just a minute when he comes up on the stand. As we're watching his video, I've compiled all the crime scene photos of the vehicle, uh, since that, well, that's what we're specifically dialing in on in his testimony. And I will be playing those as he is uh, being questioned. Now, towards the end, uh, of course, it gets crazy because Brooks comes in and wants to do one of his rants. And then he also wants to give this stupid, stupid questioning to the witness on the stand. So uh, stay tuned till the end. And let's get going. Please be seated. We'll go back on the record. <coughs> You want to talk scheduling? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, Go ahead. Th and thank you for a little extra time here. I spoke with the defendant about his witnesses for tomorrow, and I believe he's uh, filling out the paper that I asked him to so we can get his witnesses here. I can tell the court this. I have two crime lab analysts to testify yet this afternoon. They're both here once... Uh, the next one is from the Milwaukee lab. The second one's from the uh, Madison lab. So if we could complete their testimony today, it would be greatly appreciated. I don't know how late you intend to go today or how long it will take, but I'm being optimistic. Um, our final witness would be a recall of Detective Casey briefly for some uh, follow-up matters. And then we would be in a position to rest. I don't hold out hope that we'll probably be able to rest yet this evening, but maybe, depending on how late you go and how smooth things move along. All right, thank you. I appreciate that information, and um, I appreciate the parties discussing um, off the record some of the issues related to the defense witnesses, so that's great to hear. Um, I'm planned, to, I, I can go a little bit later tonight, and I, um, I would say no later than six, um, but if need be, if we can get through those two witnesses and Detective Casey, that would be great. Um, but let's see how we let's see how we go. Okay, thank you. All right, sir, did uh, you have anything? Yes, I do. Um, Detective Casey already testified. What would we'll, we'll be significance of him testifying again? Well, let's take that up later. I want to deal with the lab analysts who are here first and not uh, delay their testimony any further. So other than that issue, I, do you have anything else? Yeah, I, I thought he was released from his subpoena. At least that was my guess. Um, I honestly don't recall whether that question was asked of me. I know he's the court officer and he's been here. Um, I'd have to take a look at the record from when he testified and see if there was any reservation or have the state make an offer of proof and we can go from there, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I wanna have those lab analysts testify they're here and we can take up more fully the issue with Detective Casey um, after they're done testifying. So how late do we plan on going? I will go as late as six o'clock if need be. So I wanna keep pushing along, I wanna. Yeah, that's definitely pushing it here. That's not that late, sir. We've stayed till 5.36. I mean, Previously, there were times during jury selection we stayed till probably 7 or 7.30. Seven um, on the last two nights, we did break at about 4.30, 4, 4.45. And so um, I'm willing to go a little bit later tonight. So it's 3.30 now. Was, we'll see how things go. That, I was making that for the, saying that on the record because in my position, that is kind of late. Well, let's start now and we'll get going and maybe we don't have to go that late. So bring the jury out. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? The written decision that I previously entered is what I will stand on. I'm not going to address it any is that, further. Is that verified proof? Sir, my written decision is the decision on is subject it, matter jurisdiction. Is it verified proof? Because it hasn't been proven on the record, and that was not verified proof. It has yet I to be proven. I am de denying the request by the defendant to verify subject matter jurisdiction. It has That's to denied. be proven for the record. 
I disagree with you as a matter of law. The show jury's me, coming show out. Show me lawful law. All right, for the jury. Show me by lawful law. Unless you make an attack of agreement that you don't have to prove subject matter jurisdiction on the record by law. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Um, it's about 3.37. I know you're all filing in, so I'll wait till you all get in. Not yet. And welcome back to the rest of you who are filing in after our uh, short afternoon break. I just wanted to let everyone know I um, have let the parties know if need be. Um, I'm willing to stay between 5.30 and 6 this evening. Um, I know there's two witnesses for sure the state intends to call and I intend to get through. It's kind of the timing and whether there's a third witness tonight or not. Um, I'll decide a little bit later. Uh, but at this point, um, the state may call its next witness and the rest of you may be seated, of course. All right, Mr. Johnson, if you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right. It is up a riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. My name is Chris, C-H-R-I-S, Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. How are you employed, sir? I'm employed as the Chief of the Office of Crime Scene Response for the Division of Forensic Sciences, Wisconsin State Crime Laboratories. What is your educational background and training, briefly? I have a Bachelor's of Science degree in Molecular Biology from Marquette University. Um, I started my career approximately 16 years ago in the DNA analysis unit as a forensic scientist. Um, as a forensic scientist, I went through an extensive training program to be a, forensic, uh, a DNA analyst, um, and I've carried many positions since then. And uh, as chief of the crime response unit, what are your duties and responsibilities? My duties are twofold. I have an administrative aspect and a technical aspect. The administrative aspect is to oversee and monitor all operations or all aspects of the crime scene response program operations. My technical aspects come into play when I receive calls from law enforcement to respond to scenes to provide technical assistance. My primary duty as the technical aspect is to preserve the integrity of the evidence at crime scenes. This is done through proper examination, recognition, documentation, and collection of physical items of evidence. Furthermore, another technical aspect I have is to write confidential reports of findings, and this basically summarizes any examinations and processing techniques that are used on scene, and is a summary of the findings from those techniques. Lastly, I testify in court when needed. Is there a set procedure you follow when you are asked to respond to a crime scene? Yes. What is that, please? Judge if, leading. <coughs> if law enforcement is at the scene and would like the crime lab crime scene response team to respond, they simply call the lab that's in their jurisdiction and basically the call will get routed to me and I'll dispatch a team to the scene. And on November 21 of 2021, was the Crime Scene Response Unit asked to respond to an incident in the city of Waukesha, county of Waukesha, state of Wisconsin? Yes. What was the nature of the call? The nature of the call was to respond to an address on Maple Street to begin processing a vehicle that was abandoned in the driveway of that residence. Were you given any limited information as to the significance of the vehicle? Yes, it was reported to me that the vehicle was most, more than likely involved in uh, running through the Waukesha Christmas Parade. Were you uh, aware that it was reported pedestrians had been struck during the uh, event? 
objection Yes, that was reported. Um, the objection is noted. I'll, I'll allow it as it is uh, foundational. The witness may answer. Yes. Now, when I think of a crime scene, I typically think of a place or a location. Does your unit also uh, cover processing of a vehicle like this? Yes, in this. Overruled, you may answer. <laughs> in this particular circumstance or situation, the vehicle itself can be considered a crime scene in and of itself. And in your um, years with the crime lab, do you have prior experience processing motor vehicles that were suspected to have been involved in fatal collisions with pedestrians? Objection, leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, I've processed several vehicles related to that. Okay. Did you personally respond to uh, the address at 338 Maple? Yes, I was one of two people responding. Who else responded? Julie Avila. And does Julie work with you? She does. What's her task or uh, primary responsibility? Objection leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. For this particular scene, I was what is called the team leader, so I'm in charge of all aspects of processing the scene. Julie was a crime scene response photographer, so she was uh, tasked with appropriate documentation via photographs. Okay. Do you recall about what time it was when you arrived on scene? I arrived on scene approximately at 8.15 p.m. on 11-21-21. And I'd like to show you a series of photographs, and I'm going to have multiple sets of photographs to go through with you. This is the first set, and the set contains uh, four or five pictures. So they're going to show up on your screen first, sir, and I'm going to uh, ask you to identify these photographs, and then we'll work backwards and uh, present them to the jury with the court's permission, okay? Okay. So first on the screen is Exhibit 67, which I believe was previously admitted? Yes. 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 All right. Objection. Overruled. Sir, do you recognize the objects uh, depicted in State's Exhibit 67? Yes. This is an overview showing the front end damage of the red Ford Escape that's parked in the driveway of 338 Maple okay. Avenue. Next, we're going to present to you Exhibit 93. What's depicted in 93, please? This is a close-up showing the damage of the front end of the vehicle, the Ford, red Ford Escape that's parked in that driveway. All right. I should have asked you this. Prior to the uh, photographing of the vehicle, is it been moved or altered by you in any way, sir? No. Objection leading. Overruled. Foundational. The witness may answer. No. Please uh, put up for the witness number 68, which has been previously admitted. Go ahead. Objection. Overruled. Please describe, sir. This is, uh, the photograph's taken at an angle, the front passenger side of the vehicle, but again, showing the damage of the front end of the vehicle. Number 102. Do you recognize that photo, sir? I do. Please describe. This is. Objection. Overruled. This is a mid-range photograph of the driver front quarter panel showing a side view of the damage of the hood and the quarter panel. And number 103. Please describe. This is a overall photograph of the back end of the red Ford Escape. Do you believe these five photographs are true and accurate depictions of the way the vehicle looked on the driveway at 338 Maple that evening, sir? Objection leading. I'm sorry, I was trying to get a hold of my witness list. Could you re-ask the question? Yes, Your Honor. Do these five photographs truly and accurately depict the way the vehicle looked at 338 Maple Street on the evening of November 21, 21? Objection leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes. 
move to admit 67, well, 67 and 68 are already in. So move to admit 93, 102, 103, and permission to publish all five. Objection. Relevancy. Noted, overruled, the exhibits are received, permission to publish granted, specifically um, 67, 93, 68, 102, 103. I realize some may have been received previously, but to be thorough, I wanted to put that on the record. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Johnson, um, 67, you testified, was an overview photograph? Yeah, it's an overall photograph of the... Um, overruled, they're now being shown to the jury. It's proper, it's foundational as well. Go ahead. Yes, this is an overall photograph showing the location uh, of the vehicle, but specifically also showing the front end damage of the vehicle. All right. Next, 93. Please describe. Uh, a close-up. <coughs> Over Go ahead. A close-up of the damage that has been sustained on the front uh, hood area, bumper area of the Red Ford Escape. Next is 68. Objection. Overruled. Mid-range photograph showing the damage, front end damage, specifically from a reference point of the front passenger corner of the vehicle. I observe on the bottom of that photograph there appears to be some liquid substance on the ground. Do you see that, sir? Yes, I do. Leading. Um, overruled foundational, the witness may answer. Do you remember seeing that substance that night? Yes. Were you able to tell what it was? Objection, speculative. to you. Overruled, based upon his training and experience, he may answer. Not specifically what type of fluid it is, but some kind of engine compartment fluid. From this vehicle? Yes. Okay. Number 102, please. A mid range of the driver front quarter panel. Um, also showing what I describe as a white headband, headband on the broken driver door mirror. Is that illuminated in some fashion? Just yes. leading. Overrule. The witness may answer. Just a reminder to wait until I fully rule on the objection before you answer. I apologize. Yes. How was it illuminated? Objection leading. Overruled. It has white LEDs that are within the cloth and they're blinking on and off. Okay. And then last would be 103. Objection. Please describe. Oh, I'm sorry, he objected. Um, overruled. Go ahead. An overall from the um, further into the driveway showing the back end, the rear end of the Red Ford Escape. All right. Now, after these uh, photographs were collected on Maple Street, did there come a time where you planned to move the vehicle? Yes. Um, part of the process in arriving at a scene there are three steps. There's a scene approach, scene assessment, and a scene processing strategy. So the scene approach starts with the moment I receive a call and start thinking about what evidence might be present, just knowing the limited facts or the limited information that I have during the call. When I arrive on scene, I do a scene assessment. So I did a walkthrough of this particular vehicle around it and including the property determined from that what my processing strategy would be. So going back to answer the question, my thought and my processing strategy this particular night was to collect anything that would be fragile in nature off of the vehicle and then get it transported to a more environmentally friendly uh, secured facility to continue processing in the subsequent days. 
Was that for your comfort or for some uh, scientific reason? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer. It was very cold that night, so it, w it was difficult to, to process. It was very windy, but it was for a purely scientific standpoint of doing the necessary steps of collecting whatever I needed and I deemed fragile, collect that stuff, and then let's get it into an enclosed trailer and transport to a secure facility that's nearby. So what items, if you uh, recall, did you remove that you had deemed fragile? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. There were first some items that were in the yards or yard of this particular residence, some examination gloves and a winter hat that was in the backyard. So those items were collected. Uh, of particular interest on the vehicle was the headband. Um, that was around the driver door mirror that was broken. So that was important to collect because during transport, that might leave, most likely would have fallen off. So that's what I'm talking about, fragile evidence. Okay. So that item was removed? Correct. Uh, what about the front bumper? We saw that laying on the, on the uh, driveway. Was that secured in some fashion? Objection, yeah. leading. Well, you may answer. Yes, to make transport easy, the bumper would have had to be lifted up with bungee cords and resecured. Otherwise, as the tow company is moving the vehicle, the bumper would just continue to go underneath the vehicle, further damaging or maybe even eliminating or getting rid of physical evidence that might be on that bumper. So were you the person that secured that front bumper? I. Uh, I was there and I assisted with the tow company. Okay. Where'd you take it? So it was taken from this residence and it was taken to Waukesha County Sheriff's Office secured facility. Is that nearby here in Waukesha? Yes. Okay. Um, ask <coughs> Madam Clerk if you could turn off the display please and I'm going to uh, present to the witness only another series of photographs starting with 105. Go ahead. Do you know how many? Eight. Sequential? Uh, yes, 105 through 112. Thank you. Objection. Let me see. Well, I haven't seen them yet, so I'll have to wait, but you can put them up and then I'll make a ruling. I think we're ready on our end. We're just waiting for Madam Clark. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> I'll leave it alone. You hit it. We <laughs> just mixed each other twice. Five, 105. All right. Um, there. Given what I see on the screen, the objection is overruled. Okay. And Your Honor, for the sake of time, I'm just going to ask the witness to look through these photos just as if he had them in front of him and then I'll um, ask some foundational questions. So 105 is on the screen. Do you see it, sir? Yes. Do you need more time to review that photo? No. 106, please. Yes. Do you need more time to review that photo? Objection no. leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. 107? Yes. Do you need more time? No. 108? Yes. Do you need more time? No. 109? Yes. Need more time? No. 110? Yes, I recognize, and I don't need more time. 111? I recognize, and I don't need more time. And 112? I recognize that photo and don't need any more time. Where were each of these photos taken? Each of these photos were taken at that secure facility that where Waukesha County Sheriff's Office, their secured facility. This is indoors at that facility. Okay. And do you believe each of these photos is a true and accurate representation of what the vehicle looked like once you towed it to the secure facility? Yes. 
I'll move for admission of 105 through 112 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Jay Shane. <coughs> Noted. Exhibits 105. <coughs> 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, and 112 are all received permission to publish granted as to all. So in this photograph, sir, is the, uh, what's the condition of the front bumper, please? The Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. The front bumper is secured in somewhat, should be its original position with those bungee cords that we previously talked about. Okay. Next 106, please. Please describe. Overall photograph, uh, the <coughs> front driver's quarter panel, including um, showing the hood damage. Was there an effort by you to try and match the pieces of the bumper to the frame of the body, or is that just the way it came together? Objection. Spec with you. Go ahead, you may answer. At this time, I was not trying to physically match anything together. It was just for the purpose of securing it for transport. Okay. What is the... Uh, position of the driver's side window in this photograph, sir? The window is down. Is that the way you found it? Yes. Objection. Okay. Overruled. The witness may answer. He responded to the scene where the vehicle was located and can testify based upon his knowledge. 107, please. Please describe. An overall photograph from the point view of the front passenger side of the vehicle. Next, 108. Objection. Overruled. Please describe. An overview of the front of the vehicle, including the front passenger quarter panel and the front passenger door. What position was the front passenger window in? Down. Is that the way you found it? Yes. Okay. 109, please describe. An overall photograph of the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, including, including in this photograph is the front quarter panel, the front passenger door, and the rear passenger door. And uh, along the, the front passenger door and the rear passenger door, do you see anything Remarkable? Objection leading. Overruled. Uh, spanning the length of both doors is uh, quite a significant scratch. Have you seen scratches like that before in processing motor vehicles, sir? Objection relevancy. Overruled. I have. What is that consistent with, please? Objection leading. Overruled. Coming into contact with another item. Thank you. Uh, number 110. Please describe. An overall, overall photograph showing the rear of the passenger side of the vehicle. Spe specifically noting that the rear passenger window, um, that window is not down, it was actually shattered. Okay. Broken. Um, and also showing in this photograph are two apparent fired bullet defects. Okay, I have some other photos uh, more specific to that in a minute. Um, thank you. 111. <coughs> Objection. Overruled. Please describe. An overall photograph from the vantage point of the rear passenger side of the vehicle. And then 112, please. Objection. Overruled. And overall of the vehicle from vantage point, rear driver side of the vehicle. Is the rear driver side window, what position is it in, please? That is up. And is that the way you found it? Yes. And it looks like there's substance on the exterior of the vehicle on the driver's side. Do you see what I'm referring to, sir? Objection leading. 
Um, overall, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Do you know what that item or substance was? Objection respectfully to you. Overruled, based upon his training and experience and his personal observation of the vehicle, he may answer. Not knowing what specific fluid that might be, I did do a presumptive test to see if it's possibly blood. Okay. All tests that I did of that liquid that's on the driver's side came back negative for okay. the possible presence of blood. And was it um, <clears throat> sprayed along the most of the driver's side of the vehicle? Objection, speculative. Overruled. Yes. Okay. Now, I'd like to um, move on, sir, and ask you, did you do an interior inspection of the vehicle? Yes. And an exterior inspection of the vehicle? Correct. I'd like to um, highlight some specific areas, um, starting with the interior of the vehicle. Would you have processed the entire uh, passenger compartment and cargo space of this vehicle? Yes. And what types of things would you have been looking for, sir? Based on my former experience, um, looking for surface types that might contain potential DNA evidence. So specifically, anything that's in the vehicle that would have been handled uh, to control the vehicle or handled in a repetitive manner or with some kind of force. So for example, the steering wheel, the gear shifter, those items were swabbed by myself for the potential of DNA. We also looked at surfaces within the vehicle and processed those for the possible presence of latent fingerprints. Do you remember uh, locating an object on the front passenger seat of the vehicle? Yes. Right, I'm going to ask that uh, we display to the witness only Exhibit 117. Do you recognize what's shown in Exhibit 117, sir? Yes, there's a hat that's on the front passenger seat cushion. Is that the way the object looked when you found it? Yes. Move to admit 117, permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Exhibit 117 is received. Permission to publish. Granted. Could you please... Uh, it's a touch screen in front of you. Circle the hat that you just described for the jury. And then uh, to your left, sir, on the witness stand, before you uh, took the stand, I placed an item up there that's been marked as exhibit number 87. Do you see that on the table there? Yes. Can you identify exhibit 87? <laughs> yes, this is the winter style hat that I collected from that front passenger seat. Okay. I'd like to uh, show another photograph to the witness exhibit 118, please. Objection. Overruled, go ahead. Do you recognize the object in exhibit 118? <clears throat> I do. Do you believe this photo is a true and accurate representation of the object as you uh, found it on the vehicle? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. Um, your answer may stand again. Just wait till I rule on the objection, please. Move to admit 118, permission to publish. <laughs> Exhibit 118 is received, permission to publish, granted. Please describe. This is a close-up photograph of the clothing items that were pinned to the windshield by the crumpled hood 
and it was being held in place by that hood being pinning the items against the windshield as well as that wiper arm. Okay. Did you eventually remove these items? Yes. What did you find them to be? It was a detachable hood from a jacket as well as a winter hat. And can you just point out on the touch screen which is which? Jake's your leading. Overrule. That's the hood portion, and that's the, the hat portion. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Did you find any U.S. mail or paperwork inside the vehicle? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. Were there any names associated with the U.S. mail or paperwork inside the vehicle? Objection. <coughs> Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. What was that name? Daryl E. Brooks, Jr. Was there an address, if you can recall? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. There was, but I can't, I don't exactly recall it. Sure. Also on the table next to you, sir, is your report that I've marked as exhibit number 90. Do you see that? Yes. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Placed on the table. Go ahead, attorney offer. Well, objection. How did it get on the table? Um, your objections noted. It's overruled. Um, <coughs> record will reflect that um, there's a copy of a crime lab report. It has an exhibit sticker, number 90, with the case number of this case. Um, can I get back to the witness? Go ahead and make questions. How did it get it. on the table? Who, put, who placed it on the table? That's, Attorney that's Opera objection. indicated she placed it there. When did that happen? Attorney Opera, go ahead and continue. Did you author this report, sir? Yes, I did. If you uh, review the report, would you be able to see the address for uh, Daryl Brooks that was noted in the paperwork from the inside of the SUV? I Objection. Would. I don't consent to being called that name. Please do. Overruled. Yes, I would. Please do that, sir. Objection. Overruled. Grounds for the overrule. The witness may answer. Grounds for the overrule. Go ahead, sir. The address for the pieces of mail that I recovered was 4014 North 19th Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53209. Thank you. Objection. That should be strike. He, when he asked the question, he said he didn't recall. So how can you force somebody to recall? Oh. The witness's recollection was refreshed through the use of his report, which he indicated he documented the address. Your objections noted it's overruled. The answer will stand. Go ahead. Next question, please. Yes, and actually, if I could back up one minute and ask Ms. Gussie to put back up 117. I have to ask a question about 117. Go ahead. And if we could display it, please, Madam Clerk. Nobody got to answer no questions. Mr. Brooks, please refrain from interrupting. You'll have an opportunity to ask your questions. I have an objection of how evident how stuff got to the table without my knowledge. That that should be known. That should at least be noted for the record. It was. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, your objections noted. It's overruled. Go ahead, Attorney Offer. So that needs to stop in, happening. In it addition to, to the hat. All right, I'm going to excuse the jury. All right, All right the jury. Can't keep doing stuff with, without. It should be a fair trial. That's my right. You shouldn't be able to do things without my knowledge. And then pass it off to the jury like that's fair. They deserve to know that too. Mr. Brooks, you are well aware that the reason documents are being 
put on the I don't consent to being called that name. Are because this court indicated it would limit the movement of the parties due to your custodial status to keep things fair. And I merely asked, how did it get there? Sir, do not I'm interrupt not me, or I'm you will I'm forfeit your right to, to know be how present it got there? in this courtroom. So you holding me in contempt? Me. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm going to make a record. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm not answering your questions. So then you're not holding me in contempt. Do not interrupt me again, or you will go to the other courtroom. Under what lawful law? All right, he's interrupted me once again. Um, we're going to clear the courtroom. He's being disrespectful. I'll make a record once he moves. Unless you can promise me right now that you let me make my record without you interrupting me, sir. You gonna make your record? You can make your record. Then please don't interrupt me. Don't hold me in contempt. I've never said any such thing. Removing me for the courtroom, Your Honor, is essentially holding me in contempt. All right. No, you're forfeiting your right to be present under Illinois versus I Allen. Didn't, I didn't forfeit anything. I will, I'm going to start talking, and if he interrupts, then I will close this courtroom, and he will be taken to the next courtroom. Mr. Brooks, you are well aware that the court made some pretrial uh, rulings related to whether there would be, they can stay in. I haven't closed it yet. He's not interrupting me. Whether the parties could approach the witness stand. And I did that because you're in custody and I'm not going to allow you to approach the witness stand while in custody. Um, that is why uh, various precautions have taken place uh, to limit, frankly, that from happening. Um, throughout this trial, um, there was one instance at the very beginning of the case where I allowed the state to approach a witness. I corrected that. That hasn't happened since. We've had bailiffs take items up to the witness stand or the items have been given to the witnesses or they've been placed on the witness stand. That's proper. There is nothing uh, wrong about that. Nobody's trying to pull a fast one over you. No one is doing something that's not permitted uh, by this court or frankly under the rules of decorum and courtesy or the presentation of evidence in this case. Frankly, from my perspective, sir, your attempts and your comments are to try to dig in at this jury and to somehow create doubt about the presentation of this case or the fairness of these proceedings uh, without the party, meaning the state, having an opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. I've taken the jury out at this point to admonish you that any further mumbling under your breath um, or not recognizing when I uphold or sustain an objection that I will take as a disrupting interruption meant to disrupt the proceedings. I'm not holding you in contempt. I'm well aware that that's one of my options. I choose not to do it for the reasons that I've stated on the record previously. All right, you can forfeit your right to be present at any point in time during this trial by your conduct under Illinois versus Allen. When it is disruptive, when it uh, does not follow the simple rules of courtesy and decorum, I draw your attention once again to SCR chapter 62, um, which has been previously provided to you, which is under the statute there. Um, these constant mumbling and interruptions for the, during the proceedings. I haven't made a record of them today, but I will now. Started at 9.01, then there was five at 9.02, three at 9.03, four at 9.04, one at 9.05, sorry, two at 9.05, one at 9.06, uh, three at 9.08, again at 9.17, 9.27, 10.31, 1.05, there was talking over by you at 2.03, five interruptions at 2.14, 215, 217, at 219, um, audible muttering, 231, 233, what I would describe as inappropriate, like muttering under your breath, 235, at 306, there was the hilarious comment, at 311, there was what I would describe as arguing about the muttering and the irony of it all, at 312, there were four interruptions, at 337, um, more 409, 410, more mumbling at 411, twice, and at 412, um, nine very, uh, different times. So I think I've made an ample record of the disruptions today. I've been abundantly patient 
with you. Um, I've, again, as I stated earlier, I've even limited how I tell these things to the jury about how to disregard, and I simply say the jury is to disregard comments and statements made by the parties or the lawyers as those are not evidence. So I'm warning you, do not interrupt again when if this jury comes back or when they come back and you do that, uh, then uh, you will be removed and you will forfeit your right to be present for the examination of this witness. Let's bring the jury back in. Well, you might as well remove me then because you, what you're doing is, is, is not fair. I can't even rebut what you're saying. I didn't interrupt you. I let you make your incorrect record. Mr. Brooks, I'm bringing the jury out and we're continuing. We're going to get through these witnesses. Okay? And I'm not stopping you through from doing that. Through your behavior, that. you're not going to delay these you, proceedings today. I'm not trying We're to delay continue. the proceedings. So I wish you would stop being incorrect on the record and saying what I'm trying to do if you don't know that. You don't Mr. know what Brooks, I'm trying I'm to do. I'm bringing the jury out. I'm not going to argue with you. Then, so. then don't. Because I'm not arguing with you either. I'm stating facts. You're raising your voice. It's because very Because I'm, I'm, I'm tired of you always making a record. At me. You're making a record of me trying to look bad. I know what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. Well, I'm making a record of what's accurately You're being making done a record of problem. incorrect statements. That's what you're doing. You're not making a record of Mr. not Rose, being I'm able. I'm advising you to be quiet because the jury's coming back you're out. You're advising me to be quiet? Is you telling I'm me to be quiet? I'm to be respectful when the jury Are you comes telling out? me to be quiet or are you asking me? I'm asking you and advising okay. you. Okay, thank you for correcting that, because don't nobody tell me what to do. I don't tell nobody else what to do. I'd appreciate we're all you. In, we're all the adults in here. I've never told you to sir. do anything at all. Sir, I'd appreciate if your tone of voice would change. I, I would appreciate if you would ask me. I'm a grown man with grown kids. Don't nobody Ain't nobody going to talk to me like that. Nobody. I don't have a problem with doing what you ask me to do, not tell me. Just like when I ask you about subject matter jurisdiction that you have yet to prove on the record. But somehow I'm being intentionally disruptive. Of, uh, come on, man. Stop. Just stop it. Jury's uh, coming out. All rise for the jury. Not going to work. I'm supposed to be scared of getting removed or something. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Statement continue its examination of this witness. I believe we're on Exhibit 117. Yes, we had 117. If Madam Clerk, would you please turn the display back on? <coughs> Mr. Johnson, were there other items on the front passenger seat besides the blue winter hat? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. I do recall a cell phone being present on that front passenger seat. Do you remember what kind of cell phone? An iPhone. I also see uh, some items that look like maybe headphones or a charging cable, something like that. Do you see that, Objection sir? leading. Overruled foundational. The witness may answer. The exhibits previously been received. <coughs> Objection speculative. Overruled. I do see that. Do you remember something like that on the front passenger seat? Yes. Okay. And how about on the floorboard of the front passenger seat? Is there an item there, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. What do you remember that item was? A TV. Okay. And to the left of the TV, the white colored object? I don't recall what that is. Okay. But this is the exact way the passenger seat looked when you recovered the vehicle, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now if we could please go to Exhibit 116 and put up for the witness only. Sir, do you see Exhibit 116 in front of you? I do. Do you recognize this photograph? I do. 
do you believe this to be a true and accurate depiction of the interior of the SUV? Yes. Move to admit <coughs> 116, permission to publish. Objection. Relevancy. Overrule. Exhibit 17, excuse me, Exhibit 116 is received. Permission to publish is granted. What's in the uh, photo of 116, please? This is an overview of the rear passenger seat. Uh, that rear passenger compartment contained several clothing items and miscellaneous items. Okay. And uh, was the... Um, Condition of the back seat like this when you found the vehicle, sir. Objection speculative. Overruled the witness <coughs> the answer based upon his knowledge of recovering the vehicle from the scene and his training and experience. Yes. Now for the witness only, I'm going to please ask uh, Ms. Gussie to put up 113, 114, and 115 for his review. <coughs> Go ahead. Is 113 up? Yes. Okay, do you recognize that item? I do. Okay. Next, 114. Do you recognize 114? Yes. And 115, do you recognize 115? There it is. I do. Okay. Do you believe these three uh, photographs truly and accurately depict uh, the vehicle, these areas of the vehicle, sir? Yes. I'll move to admit 113, 114, and 115 permission to publish. <coughs> Exhibits 113, 114, and 115 are all received permission to publish granted. Please. Oh. Jury would let me know when the jury box monitors are on. All right, thank you very much. All right, please describe 113, sir. That is an apparent fired bullet defect that's in the windshield of the Ford Escape. Is that the rear view mirror on the left side of the picture? Yes, this photograph would be from the inside looking through the windshield. Were you able to tell the path of travel for the bullet? Yes. Objection, speculative. Please describe. Overruled, be my answer. Yes. The, the fired bullet that caused this defect most likely was came through that rear passenger window that was shattered and entered the vehicle and then exited the vehicle through the windshield. So that's a ex exit damage that we're seeing there. Yes. How can you be sure? Windshields have laminated, laminated glass and so the directionality of a fire bullet going through laminate glass, there's an indicative laminate tag we call it. So that shows the direction of the fire bullet. Okay. Number 114, please. Please describe. That's an apparent fired bullet defect. I call this a striking defect. That's on the roof rail of the passenger side of the vehicle. Okay. Why do you call it a striking defect? It didn't penetrate any part of the vehicle. It was a more of a glancing kind of ricochet. Okay. And then uh, number 115. And if you could zoom in on that uh, back left. Yep, thank you. <coughs> Please describe. This is a, a, an apparent fired bullet defect. I call this a perforating defect because it actually went through the exterior door skin and went all the way through into the inside of the vehicle. Did you ever find the, uh, the fired round in the vehicle? Yes, I did recover a fired bullet and fired bullet fragment from the rear cargo area of the vehicle. Okay. Was there any evidence that that bullet traveled any further than the cargo area of the SUV? Objection, speculative. Overall, based upon the witness's training and experience and examination of the vehicle, he may answer. No, the bullet stayed in that rear cargo area. Okay. Now, aside from um, examining the interior and the exterior of the vehicle at ground level, did you attempt to look underneath the vehicle? Yes, the first processing strategy, if we go back to that, I wanted to get everything collected from all sides of the vehicle and inside of the vehicle 
before putting it on a vehicle lift to examine the undercarriage of the vehicle. So you did do that? Yes. What kinds of things are you looking for on the undercarriage? Looking for anything that shouldn't be normally present on the undercarriage of the vehicle. So I was looking for any hairs, fibers, any potential biological fluids such as blood. Did you find any such objects? Injection leading. Overrule. He may answer. Yes, I did. Did you collect those items? Yes, I did. You had described for us earlier um, swabbing of the steering wheel on the interior of the vehicle. Do you recall that? Injection yes. leading. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. How do you go about swabbing a steering wheel, sir? Objection. What's the relevancy? Overruled. The witness may answer. The best way to collect DNA evidence from a surface is to use a two-swab technique. Well, the first swab is a swab that's slightly moistened with uh, deionized water and basically swabbing the surface and then following up that swab with a dry swab. So it's a two swab process, a wet swab followed by a dry swab and that becomes one item of evidence. Same thing for the gear shift? Yes. What do you do with these swabs after you collect them? I put them into the appropriate container and then seal that container, write my description of that particular item of evidence, and eventually that evidence is transferred to a unit at the crime laboratory for analysis. In this particular case, those items, anything for DNA, is gonna be transferred to, to the DNA analysis unit. Did that happen? Yes, that did. And how about the uh, hat, States Exhibit 87, uh, did that? get transferred to another unit for further analysis, to your knowledge? Objection. Yeah, so any clothing item that's... Hold on. There was an objection. Oh, Grounds? Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may continue answering. Clothing items that are worn by individuals are a really good source of transfer of DNA. So, yes, I collected that hat and it was transferred to the DNA analysis unit. Your report exhibits 90. Did you believe that to be a, a true and accurate narration or summary, I should say, of your work in this case, sir? Yes, I do. Move to admit number 90, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Exhibit 90 is received. I don't have any other questions then, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Cross exam, please. You said you do DNA uh, analysis, correct? No, I I did DNA analysis for nearly 10 years. I don't actually do DNA analysis anymore. So at the time of the incident, were you doing DNA analysis? No. So who did the DNA analysis on all the items that were found during your investigation? DNA analyst Trevor Nailed. Did you see the the results of those DNA anal Did you see the results of those DNA tests? We did have conversations. Did you see them? No. So it'd be fair to say you don't know what those results were. I didn't verify it. Like I said, we just had conversations. So do you know the results of the DNA analysis? In particular, is there a particular item? For any of the items. I don't recall the exact results, no. And you made reference to the uh, the gunshot that that you stated stayed in the rear cargo. Uh, where in the rear cargo did you find that shell casing? 
objection. That's a misstatement. It wasn't a shell casing, Your Honor. Shell casing, fragment, same thing. Hold on. There's been an objection. I'll sustain the objection. It mischaracterizes the testimony and ask that you rephrase it. Did you find a shell casing, a bullet fragment? I found a fire bullet fragment. Where did you find the fire bullet fragment? It was really close proximity to where the rear latch comes down and hooks in to stay closed. So on the floor of the rear cargo by where the actual cargo door comes down. And you said a latch that comes down? Yeah, so how doors latch, like car doors latch, you know where the latch is? So where the rear cargo door came down and latched, it was in really close proximity on the horizontal surface of that rear cargo area. Did you observe uh, if if the bullet fragment had struck anything? It struck some items in that rear cargo area. Do you recall what, what it struck? I don't. made reference to a headband being on the, um, the rear view driver's side mirror, correct? Correct. It was on the driver's door mirror. And from your expertise, how would you, in your opinion, guess that it got there? By coming into contact with something or someone that was wearing it? And do you know that for sure? No, but based off of my experience of a lot of years of examination of physical items of evidence. But it'd be fair to say that you don't know exactly. No, I wasn't at the parade. I wasn't. No. And you stated that you were present for the towing of the vehicle, correct? Yes. Do you recall at any time anyone uh, attempting to start the vehicle? No. And you stated that the bumper was, I guess, moved at some point so it wouldn't drag under the vehicle. I'm, I'm guessing that's what you said. If I'm wrong, you can. No, that's correct. Yeah, we, we used bungee cords to secure it off the ground so that when we're moving it or putting it on the flatbed to go to, to the actual enclosed trailer, that it wouldn't be constantly going underneath the vehicle. When towing the vehicle, what was it placed on? Because of the amount of traffic or cars that were parked on the road, we couldn't, the towing company couldn't get the enclosed trailer right to the end of the driveway. So the vehicle was put onto a flatbed truck and then driven a few houses down where then it was transferred to an enclosed trailer and then removed from the scene. So with the bumper, being that it was first placed on a flatbed truck, as you say, at that time with the bumper had, what, what, what problem with the bumper had caused if it wasn't going to be physically dragged or, or anything at that point? I'm not sure I understand your question. What, what kind of problem with the bumper pose if the vehicle was on a, on a flatbed truck? The whole point essentially, is essentially essentially what I'm saying is to give you more clarity, how could the bumper be dragged at that point? It was being removed from the surface of the driveway onto the flatbed. So if the bumper weren't secured in an upright position, it would be pulled and the bumper as the vehicle is going this way, the bumper would be pulled underneath the vehicle. 
So once it was secured on the flatbed truck, would the bumper still pose any problem? The, the vehicle on the flatbed, the bumper was in a secured position. If it wasn't bungee corded, would it have posed a problem? Yes. How so if it wasn't moving? The whole purpose was to secure the bumper in place to preserve any physical evidence that might have been on the bumper. And you, do you recall who did the actual towing? The company is complete towing and recovery. And you stated to one to get the vehicle to a envir environmentally friendly, secure location? Yeah, a better term would be environmentally controlled. Uh, what, what do you mean by environmentally controlled? Proper lighting uh, outside of the elements, outside of view of the public, so an enclosed building. Why the reference to outside of the public? It's easier to do examinations in a controlled environment. Would it be fair to say at that time, before it was towed, the, the, the vehicle had been uh, secured, uh, checked. That was done. That was done out in public. So, what would be the difference at that point? I'm going to go back to my original statement of what my primary duty is. My primary duty is to preserve the integrity of the evidence. So that night, I was concerned with doing the necessary steps that I deemed relevant to collect and then get that vehicle to a more suitable environment just based off of how much more work and analysis and processing that vehicle would entail. Fundamentally, I follow, um, I follow what you're saying fundamentally. The question though is, by the time you arrived to the scene where the vehicle was located, were you aware that the vehicle had essentially been already investigated? No. So you had no knowledge that the vehicle had been secured, had been um, pretty much investigated by that point? Well, I was aware that the vehicle was in a secured state. I don't know what happened prior to that. It was very little information that I received on the initial phone call because of the hectic nature of everything. So I had an address and I knew that the vehicle was being secured by law enforcement. So law enforcement were present when you arrived to the scene? Yes. And at that time you had learned, no, uh, did you learn any knowledge from the law enforcement other than what you were told during the phone call? No. Do you recall who you were called by? I was called by Special Agent in Charge Dave Clabundi of the Division of Criminal Investigations. <laughs> Do you recall what time you arrived at the scene? I arrived at approximately 8.15 p.m. Do you recall what time the vehicle was found? I don't recall. Do you recall anyone telling you or mention, mentioning what time the vehicle had been found? I don't recall. So it would be fair to say before you arrived on the scene, you have no knowledge of what's been happening around the vehicle? That's correct. say you you made reference to a hat being found in the background do you do you remember saying that or in the backyard rather I'm sorry not the background the backyard I meant to say yes and at the time that you observed this hat in the backyard do you 
from your expert opinion, do you recall it having any relevance to the vehicle? No, it, it was um, an item of evidence or an, a potential item of evidence that just seemed out of place. So in that, those types of situations, I always collect those types of items. But you weren't sure at the time <coughs> if it had any involvement with the actual vehicle? No. Was there anything significant that stood out about the hat? Just the location. Did you find any blood on the hat? Did you find... Or is it just pretty much just a hat in the backyard? I didn't do a thorough, thorough examination of the hat. So as far as you, you were concerned, you, you, it was basically just taking in the evidence as a precautionary thing? or Yeah, it was an item that just seemed out of place, so I collected that hat. Did you at any time obtain knowledge about the relevancy of that? No. <clears throat> All the uh, photographs that you were shown, had you seen those photographs before today? Yes. Do you recall if they were taken the same night of your investigation or multiple nights or days rather there were multiple days and do you recall why you had to or do you recall why those photos had to be taken over a multiple day span yes the vehicle needed a comprehensive evaluation or processing examination of pretty much every single side and surface of that vehicle. And to do that uh, photograph-wise would have took days? Yes. So when did you start, uh, when did you start actually uh, doing an investigation of the items inside of the vehicle? That would have been the 22nd. November 22nd. So the next, the next day? Correct. And so did you yourself do uh, analysts of the outside of the vehicle? Yes. Same day, 22nd of November? Yes. So you kind of started the outside and the inside pretty much roughly at the same time? Yes. Do you recall how long you, uh, your complete investigation took? Mine along with my colleagues? Yours. Mine. The examination itself of just me examining the vehicle? Just you. Probably over 40 hours. And that does not include the report that I'm writing. It doesn't include the process of going through the report, everything. But my examination, at least 40 and so I'm assuming you did the report after you completed the initial investigation part. Yes, the report's a summary of my processing. And define summary. What do you mean by summary? It pulls everything together. It details my examinations and any findings I have from those examinations. I always view summary as not every detail, but pretty much like Uh, it's, it's, it's much as would be relevant, but not every single detail. Would that be fair to say? This report is comprehensive in the terms of it lists every single item that was collected. So why would you refer to it as a summary? It's a summary of the examination and processing. That's the best way to describe it. It's not a dictation. In other words. What do you mean by there, dictation? There are other reports that other agencies may do that are dictated, right? They're 
this, I did this, then I did this, then I did this. This is a summary. This isn't a dictated report. So what exactly did you summarize in your report? My examination and processing strategies that I used and the items of evidence collected and any relevant findings associated with those <coughs> examinations. Did you do any examination of the cell phones? No, I collected those and transferred those to a detective with the Waukesha Police Department. Do you recall who that detective was? David, his last name is spelt, I believe, F-O-Y-E-N, Foyen. So at the time that you turned the phone phones over, did you do any do any more work in regards to the phones? No. <clears throat> Do you recall doing any uh, investigation on The airbag control module? I didn't, no, I don't do that. Do you recall obtaining a search warrant to conduct an inspection on the uh, ACM? I'm sorry, no. your name? I understand. An inspection of what? Uh, the, the ACM, I guess that would be the air control module I'm guessing that's what that's thank you re referencing no since I don't do that type of analysis or examination I didn't obtain any search warrant with that any reason why I would say that in the paperwork objection vague grounds sustain this to the form of the question <clears throat> As to what paper your paperwork you're referring to? Uh, I'm guessing. I don't know what the what it will be called, but it says conclusion inspection summary. <coughs> and, and the conclusion inspection inspection. Or conclusion slash inspection summary. Do you recall? Is it from this witness? Huh? Is it from this witness? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't think that is from this witness, John. I don't see anything like that in this Exhibit 90. Are you perhaps still looking at Inspector Schultz's report from the State Patrol, the last witness? What page number do you have? And I'll take a look at it and I'll compare. This says uh, page 5. Yeah, he's looking at uh, the last exhibit from Inspector Schultz, 83. What it says Chief Christopher Johnson. Oh, it does say that in 83. It says, if I can read for completeness, or you can, it says, upon arrival, I met with crime scene chief Christopher Johnson from the Wisconsin State Crime No, Lab. no, no, no. That's not what I'm reading from. Okay. Chief Johnson had obtained a search warrant to conduct the mechanical inspection and to image the data retained within the escape's airbag control module ACM. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. So that was written by Inspector Schultz, who just testified, not this witness. To clarify the record here. Thank you. Yes. I apologize for that. It's all in the same paperwork with uh, Chief Johnson, so I, maybe that's where the confusion comes in. The record would reflect this witness. His last name is Johnson, so I think that's understandable. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know. I was just reading what I have here. Fair enough. Keep going.
Do you recall at any time obtaining any type of search warrants pertaining to the vehicle in this incident? Yes, I have obtained a copy of the search warrant. And do you remember what that uh, search warrant was was for? What, what was the intended search? Uh, to search the vehicle and process it for any biological fluids, hairs, fibers, any electronic equipment. Any personally identifying information? And uh, the, the, the ACM would, would fall under the lines of uh, the mechanical side of? Yes. At any time during your inspection, did you observe anyone try to start the, the vehicle? When I was with Investigator Schultz, when he came to my laboratory, he attempted to start it. And after uh, you, you already st stated that your initial part of your investigation before before the report uh, totaled 40 hours. And at that time, after you had completed your report, did you do any more investigating in regards to the vehicle? After my report was complete? Yeah, after, after you had done uh, the 40 hours uh, that you stated with and then the actual report. No, once my report's done, I didn't do any further examination of the vehicle. And after that was completed, had you uh, received any follow-up from law enforcement at, after you had completed everything? No. Had you yourself uh, followed up with law enforcement ab about the investigation after you completed your initial part? No.
you yourself didn't file any claims in this matter, did you? No. Do you know of anyone who filed any claims in this matter? I don't. And do you recall who you were subpoenaed by to testify? I was subpoenaed by District Attorney Sue Opper. Do you recall when that was? I believe it was sometime. I don't exactly recall when. And did you did you follow up on that subpoena? No. After you had received it. No. Have you at any time seen or read any complaints in in regards to this incident? No. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? The state of Wisconsin. Would you label that as a person, an actual human? Grounds? Sustained, not relevant. You ever actually seen the plaintiff in this matter? Grounds? Sustained. If you saw the plaintiff, would you be able to identify the plaintiff? Objection Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. Pursuant to 9611, <coughs> sir, please move on to a different line of question. Just trying to establish who the plaintiff is, Your Honor. Do you see the plaintiff president in court today? Objection, irrelevant. Sustained. Would you consider yourself to be an injured party in this matter? No. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Uh, just very briefly, uh, Mr. Johnson, you said when you arrived on Maple Street, there were police officers present? That's correct. And you said the vehicle was secure at that point? Correct. Objection. What do you mean? Leading. Um, the answer may stand. Next question. Overruled. What do you mean by that, sir? The perimeter was secured with crime scene tape, and there were officers that were standing at the location where the vehicle was. Was it, would it have been possible for a member of the public or any curious person to just walk up and touch the vehicle or do anything to the vehicle? Objection. Speculative. Uh, based upon his training and experience, he may answer. Overruled. <coughs> they would have been stopped by law enforcement. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. While he's stepping down, if my jurors and anyone else in the courtroom want to stand, I do want to get through one more witness tonight. <coughs> and, and then uh, the exhibits that Mr. Johnson has, Your Honor, what would you like done with those? Uh, I'll take them. All right. Uh, I have 90, and I have 87. Yes. <coughs> what was 87? Eighty-seven is a hat. I'm not sure yeah. if I did move that, but I would move that into evidence. So we don't need that item for the next witness. Okay. okay, I'll put that back. Thank you. Um, Objection to that. that um, before you should before you showed me that, I didn't even see what that was. If you would have never told, I know, but if you never would have told me, I never would have even know what that was, because I didn't see it until you just moved it. 
this exhibit marked as Exhibit 87? Go ahead. Is that state has moved it into evidence? I believe there's an objection. It's yes, noted. there is an objection. Um, overruled based upon the testimony of the prior witness. It is received. And who do we have coming up to the stand? You're All right. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. You guys have a blessed afternoon. Have a great rest of the week, but I'm sure I will see you before it's all over. Stay safe. Until next time.